Amen. I said amen. amen. Are you expectant? You know, when you start something new, everyone attacks you first and figure you out later. When something is new and is uncommon, the first thing it attracts is attack. Because what people don't understand, they attack. I'm not promising you that your new level will come without trouble. I'm not promising you that, because if anybody tells you that, the person is not being honest to you. But the troubles of life that will come, only come your way to restructure you. They come your way so you begin to know the people to be open to and the people not to be open to. And also, some things that must never go out. One day the Lord was telling me something. Jesus said to me, he said, while I was in this world, I keep secrets. I said, wow. He said, yes. He said, there are things the Father told me. This is Jesus now. There are things the Father told him that he had no right and he was not permitted to tell anybody. I'll give you one. The disciples asked him, what time is the coming of the Son of Man? He said, no one know it except the Father, not even the Son. And the Bible said there is nothing the Father doesn't tell the Son. So what Jesus was saying, I've been told, but I don't know. This is not an information for public consumption. So if anybody tells you, oh, Jesus himself doesn't know, that's not true, because Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He knew, but he was saying, as far as the Father has not permitted me to disclose it, I don't know it. There are people that will come around and anointing and do well, and some won't do well. And if anybody doesn't do well, he thinks that there is something that those who are doing well are giving. That there must be one thing they are giving them. That's why they are doing it. It's not true. Proverbs 27, 19 says, As in what are faith, answer it to faith, so is the heart of man to man. It is the heart. Your heart cannot be in a place and you don't enjoy what the earth is enjoying. It is your heart. If your heart is divided, nothing comes together. Amen. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. No strange thing being given anywhere. Do we need the glory of God in our lives? Do we need the glory of God in our lives? Do we need the glory of God in our lives? I said, do we need the glory of God in our lives? Let's lift a hand to what heaven said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. I can hear the sound of angels. Is the sound of many waters, the sound of worship coming from his throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known. Holy, 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 are you Lord? Holy, are you Lord? Holy, 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 are you Lord? The heavens and angels bow. The heavens and angels bow. The redeemed, we worship you now. Let's sing holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. The heavens and angels Worship you now. 
Sing you a glorious Are you a glorious I missed today. The glory of God is here. My own friends feel me. Friends and families turn their backs on me. Lord, you stood by me. Never. My old friends fail me Turn their backs on me Lord, you stood by me You never let Lift your hands, lift your hands as you, take, as you sing it again but, Well, let's do that without a drum, without a keyboard, without nothing Just with our voice, lift your hands to heaven My old friends fail me Turn their backs on me. Lord, you stood by me. You never let me down. Let's sing that again to him. My old friends fail me. Families turn their backs on me. You never let me down. One more time, let's sing it to him. My old friends fail me. Friends and families turn their backs, backs on me. God, you stood by me. You never let me down. My old friends fail. My old friends fail. On your backs on me, Lord, you stood by me. You never let me down. Take it again, my old friends. Friends, turn your backs 
ransom me Lord, you stood by me You never let me down We bless your holy name Throw your weight around and prove to the devil you are master In Jesus' name we pray Take your seat, give the Lord a hand clap Exodus 33, 18. God bless you, sir. Let's appreciate a father in the land, Bishop Fred Okimame. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Exodus 33, 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Somebody say, show me thy glory. Say that again. Say, Lord. Say, Lord. Say, Lord. Lord, tonight, tonight, show me your glory. Now, this demand was made by Moses after they were out of Egypt. He made this demand to the Lord after they had left Egypt. After they had seen all the ten plagues. After they have seen all the miracles and manifestations of God's power in Egypt. He still said, show me the glory. Meaning, the glory is beyond the miracles. After they've exited and escaped and gotten out of Egypt, he still said, show me thy glory. So the glory is beyond deliverance. After they had come out of where the enemies kept them for 430 years, after they've come out of the place of captivity, generational captivity, fathers were handing bondages to children. After that, he says, show me that glory. So the glory is beyond escape, is beyond deliverance. The glory is beyond relocation. There is something about the glory that we must know. I need you to understand, one of the best if not the best teachers that ever walked on the face of this earth the best teacher that could pick up a sentence or pick up a topic and it would speak by inspiration and revelation was Jesus. He was the best teacher. He was the one who at 33 could give parables that men of 83 could not understand. 33 he could give parables as a matter of fact he was endowed with inspiration that at the age of 12 he could unveil things that professionals doctors teachers lawyers could not unveil so he was born with both inspiration and revelation so the men that worked with him were very exceptional that is why if you read acts chapter 4 verse 13 he said when they saw them they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men but they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus meaning that when this men were talking they knew they had no degree they knew they had no certificate they knew they had no pedigree but what they were saying were things that only people who sat in class could say what they were saying we are things that people who were too taught by professors could say and they say oh they had been with the greatest teacher of all time so jesus was that man that spent three and a half years and he was teaching his people he taught tax collectors he taught fishermen he taught doctors luke was a doctor luke was somebody who understood the motions of health and that is why anytime you see any healing scripture or any healing that took place in the bible luke takes his time to go into details and that is why when luke said they were healed don't argue they were healed if Luke said they were healed, shut up. They were healed. Because this is a professional talking. But Jesus was the best of all teachers. He taught them. He used parable. He used revelation. With despite all the teaching. He said, hey guys, I have taught you everything you need to know. But tarry in Jerusalem. No matter what you think I have taught you until something enter you. What I have taught you is useless. No matter what you think I have taught you, but until something comes on your head, until something enters your spirit, what I have taught you is a waste of time. 
If you study your Bible very well, the Bible tells us that Job had three friends. If you read Job 32 verse 3, he said there were three friends of Job. But I'm here to present to you that it was not three friends that came, it was four. But only three were respected by their age. Am I communicating here? Only three were respected by their age. When, 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 when Job speak, the first will speak, the second will speak, and the third will speak. Job will speak, the first will speak, the second will speak, the third will speak. And there was a little young man called Elihu. He was one of the friends of Job that came. But he was despised. He was ignored. He was seen as irrelevant. He, he, he was seen as a practical nobody. And he was quiet all the while. But in verse 6, he refused to die silent. Because he knew that if he goes like that, the chapter and the book of Job was almost expiring. He will not be known. 31 chapters of not being noticed. He said, and Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered, I am young. Ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and did not show my opinion. He said, verse 6 said, I thought that years should teach wisdom. Verse 7, he said, I thought that multitude of years should teach wisdom and this should speak. In other words, what I thought is that when somebody has learned enough and the person has been properly schooled, the person should have answers. What I thought was that when somebody has been trained, when somebody has been around a place, as it were, of learning, the person should have answers. Because you people have been around Job now for the past eight months and have been listening. It seems there is no solution. And I know you one, I know you two, I know you three i know you to be men of wisdom i know you to be men who are old but it is through this your experience i now know verse eight that there is a spirit in man that if this has nothing to do with age this has nothing to do with experience it is called a spirit in man and the inspiration Shatakabaladas of the Almighty. There is something that is not physical. The Bible says, speaking of Abraham, he said, Abraham called Isaac, Genesis 25 and verse 5, and they gave him all. He called Isaac and they gave him all. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac. Verse 26 says, and he gave gifts to the children of the concubine. Verse 6, verse 6, bring up verse 6. Verse 6, and he gave gifts. After giving Isaac all, the sons of the concubine, he gave them gifts and sent them from Isaac. He gave them things, but gave Isaac all. If he actually gave Isaac all, from where did he see the things he gave them? The Bible says he gave Isaac all. So where did he get the things? <laughs> what Abraham gave the people was material things. But what Abraham gave Isaac was what made him Abraham. What he gave Isaac was elements because Isaac was broke. Despite the father gave him all, he was broke. Famine came. He suffered. How did he bring out the all that the father gave him? It was inside him, but he did something to bring it out. In Genesis, that same 26, if you read from verse 12, we begin to see what he did that brought down the all from verse 12 of Genesis 26, verse 12, verse 12, verse 12. He says, Genesis 26, verse 12. 26, 26. Thus, then Isaac sowed in that land. All that was in him did not come out until seed came out. The father deposited something in him, but he had to sow to bring it out. And the Lord blessed him. By reason of what he carried inside of him, by reason of what was inside of him, to bring it out, he had to sow. Am I communicating here? He had 
your soul to bring it out. I read my Bible this afternoon and I've read that portion several times and I started laughing. Romans 1 11. You know what Paul said? Paul said, I desire to come to you in earnest that I may impact to you some spiritual gift. How many of you went to school a bit? You go to school small. You went to school a bit. Huh? Eh? The word some is pl plural. It's not singular. But if you study that verse 11, he said that may impact to you some spiritual gift. The word should have been gifts. Oh, nobody's here. I have come. My desire is to meet you and give you some spiritual gift. It should be gifts. What Paul was saying you know, is that it's a single element but it has several expressions. What I am bringing on you is singular but it is pregnant with dimensions. What I want to put on you is just something called a tangible transfer. But what he carries is in several ways. Oh my God, nobody is following me. That thing is called glory. It's called glory. It's called glory. When it comes upon your life, it has several expression. It has several manifestation. It is dispensed in several ways. Today, that glory shall come upon your life. A man that is glory is a man that is graced. No wonder the Bible says in Psalm 84 verse 11, the Lord God is a son and a shield. He shall give grace and glory. When grace comes, sir, sir, you don't lack money because you are not working hard. That's not why you lack money. You don't lack money because the economy of the country, of your nation is bad. That's not why you lack money. You don't lack money because that business is not in trend. That's not why you lack money. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, 7, you, we discover why people lack. We discover why people lack. Verse 8, 8 verse 7. 8 verse 7. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 7. He said, but God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have been all. So you lack all because you lack grace. To have grace is to have all. There is a grace for money. There is a grace for sound health. Everything you need in life that you will ever achieve in life is grace. So when you have all grace, you have all wealth. You have all grace, you have all health. You have all grace, you have all deliverances. You have all grace, you have all dimension. There are people that will not like your face. But when you begin to produce results, they can't deny it. Okay, let me give an illustration. Many of all of us are Christians here. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Eh? Okay. Don't mix with unbelievers. Unbelievers are those who are not Christians. Eh, that's what the Bible says. Eh, but there are some of you unbelievers are in your house. I can explain. All of us here, 90% of us, 90% of believers in this country, Dangote lives in their house. It's either is living as cement or is living as indomie. No, nobody's what I'm saying. When you manifest, there are people that may not like your person but can't avoid your product. Ay, 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 Mama was doing send forth for the children in school in Dynamic Montessori. And she said I should come and give a speech. And people actually do not know that I'm naturally very shy. They think I'm this bold person who is that expressive. No, naturally I like to just be quiet. So that day she put pressure, she said, come speak. I said, okay. So I went there. As I was walking in there, I saw somebody by the door, uh, by the gate. And I was wondering, I just called him and I said, how are you? He said, fine. He was one of those pastors who fought me heavily. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I brought my child to school. Our school. 
And I looked at him, I said, I don't understand. Do you know I own it? He said, yes. Do you know it belongs to me and my wife? He said, yes. I said, we used to preach against me. He said, till now. So, I may not like your person, but I like your product. So, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Just be desirous to produce results. Just be desirous to manifest. Just be desirous to have answers. There are people that may not like your tribe as a musician, but they cannot stop singing your song. I, I wish I was... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I was talking to somebody right now. I wish I was talking to somebody right now. They may not like your face. But just keep producing results. Keep producing results. Keep bringing evidences. Keep manifesting. Keep making impact. Am I talking to somebody? Life is a debt that you must pay. And the debt of life is only paid by the oil from above. There is a certain debt in life that education cannot pay. Academic qualification cannot pay. Technical know-how cannot pay. It has only a, a respect and honor and value for the oil that comes from God. Am I communicating now? It has only respect from, for the oil that comes from God. So, Moses was in a critical situation where he said to God, I need to see your glory. There is something about you, Lord, that you have still not shown me. There is nothing you can assess without desire. Jesus knew what was written of him. I'm sure he knew it at 12. He knew what was written of him at 12. I'm sure he knew it at 29. But he knew no matter what is written, I need prayer to take ownership of it. And when he had prayed, he said, look for 18. The spirit of the Lord. Uh, he said, and the heavens, when he was being baptized, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, he took ownership of that scripture. He took ownership. He said, and he saw. So the first thing that happens when heaven opens is that you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Saka Prahadesha. Leku soprati kati katabali kataya. And the Bible tells me, he says, show me. The problem the church lack has is that we underestimate our place in God. We underestimate. Hear this. Hear this. Help me, Spirit of God. Help me. When Adam was created, the Bible said God broke through his side. Eve came out. That was the bride. When Jesus hung on the cross, they broke through his side. It was not just only water and blood that came out. The bride, a type of what happened to Adam. The bride came out from his side. The price was paid. The reason he was hung on the cross for his feet not to touch the ground was you cannot pay the price for the earth when your feet is on the earth. You have to be lifted above the earth for you to pay the price of the earth. He said in Genesis 3.18 that no matter what you do, your labor, he said it will produce tons and tistos for you. All your struggle, Adam, shall produce tons and tistos for you. But the Bible says that was speaking of the cross, meaning no matter the labor of man, what man will churn out is tons and tistos and brass is what man will churn out. So Jesus looked and said, what am I going to do? I need to make sure man stop the spirit of tons. And the Bible says in John chapter 19 verse 2, they plated 
a thorn. They plated a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Meaning, Jesus carried the cross of Genesis 3.18 and he put it on his head. He said, God said to you, Adam, that all you stretch your hand to do shall produce just thorns. I carry the thorns and I put on my head. In Matthew 27, 29, the same thing. He carried the thorns and he placed on his head. Hear me! And hear me now. As you hear the sound of my voice from my mouth to God's ears. After now, everywhere you put your hand, you shall prosper. Shasata. Take care of those people. Shatasa. When heaven opens, you see. Somebody say, I'll see. Oops, I'll see. I'll see. God can never bless you beyond the level of your ability to see. Jeremiah 1, 11, what do you see? What seest thou? Jeremiah 24 and verse 3, what seest thou? God can bless you beyond your capacity and ability to see. Am I speaking here? Amos 8, 2. Amos 7, 8. Zechariah 5, 2. Zechariah 4, 2. What seest thou? What do you see? What can you see? Matthew 6, 22. The lamp of the body is the eye. For if the eye is single, then the whole body shall be full of light. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of Thy law. Numbers 24 verse 3. Balaam the son of Poor, the man whose eyes were open. What do you see? What can you see? He said to Abraham from the place where you stand. Meaning, proud to that encounter with Abraham, Abraham left you know the choice and decision for Lot. He said, Lot, pick wherever you want, and I'll go the other way. And the Bible says, Saul, Lot looked at a path that was well watered, and he picked and made a good choice as far as he was concerned. So God said to Abraham, From where you stand, what you can see, eastward, westward, northward, southward, including where Lot took. If you can see it, take it back. What do you see? When heaven opens, you see. Now listen. It's not that your eyes are closed. It's your heaven that is closed. No matter how you struggle with closed heavens, you can't have open eyes. With closed heavens. Protakatash. There are things we do because we think that the day of the anointing is the day of the enthronement. Twelve years after David was anointed, Saul was still on the throne. Twelve years. Twelve. Twenty-four years after prophecy came on Abraham, a child didn't come. John the Baptist was being trained to be the next priest after his father. At the age of twelve, he left the temple and went to the wilderness. And was interceding for 18 years. He stayed so long in the wilderness that he had no more capacity to relate with their mothers. John the Baptist lived so long in the wilderness, he had no capacity to relate with normal human beings, mere mothers. And that is why he had nothing like leaves or vegetable as meal. What he ate was locust and white honey. Because at this point, he wasn't relating with mere mothers. He was relating with animals. So when he comes out to speak, this is not a man talking to a man. This man is too brutal, too wild. Am I speaking to somebody here? Too brutal. And what came out of his mouth? <laughs> When the glory shows up, you know, some of us have to change, change the things that go, oh, oh, have you seen people just sit down, they feel it, it's terrible, it's a certain, certain kind of way. You feel a certain kind of thing. Bless you, I want sick. You, you've heard that before? My mouth is bitter, fever symptom. The three Hebrew boys 
when they got to Babylon, the first thing they taught them was Babylonian language. When Joseph got to Egypt, the first thing they taught him was Egyptian language. For the enemies to keep him perpetually in bondage, they will teach you how to speak the language of that bondage. So long you can speak the language of that bondage, you remain perpetually there. The Bible says, the Bible didn't say, he said, let the weak say I am strong. It's not a lie. Don't say it as it is. Say it as it should be. Am I speaking to somebody here? Let the sick weak say I am strong. Let the sick say I am healed. For the sake of the Bible says faith. Call it those things that be not as though they were. Why we look not on the things which are seen. But the things which are not seen. For the things we see are temporal. Scarcity is temporal. Battles are temporal. Limitation is temporal. Somebody says temporal. Say it's temporal. Say it again. Say it again. Say it is temporal. Say it is temporal. Say it is temporal. Why we look not on the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. And listen, child of God, I got to let you know that every battle in life, um, without due respect, every battle in life has an origin, has a source. Uh, every battle in life has a source, has an origin. And victory also has a source. It also has an origin. When you are born again without addressing foundational issues, you are already saved you are already discharged, but you are not acquitted. Can I explain that? When a man commits a crime during the pandemic, you know pandemic, the heat of the pandemic, because you are not working. When a man commits a major crime, he will be arrested by the police. But they cannot arrest him in court. He will be given bail. He should go. He is discharged. We will postpone the case till the court open. Yes, that's what happened when he says, Lazarus, comfort. That's what happened when you get born again. You comfort. You come out of darkness. You come out of darkness. And by the time you come out of darkness, you are already discharged. But the grave clothes are still there. That is where he now says, lose him. When we pray against altars from our background, we are saying, lose me. And let me go. Because if Lazarus had come out with his face bound, his hand bound, he will be jumping. He's, he, he's, he can't relate with mortal men. He can't relate with normal human beings. And he will be around the radius, around the radius, around the circumference. But when we begin to pray against altars, we are saying, lose me. Let me go. Let me go. Powers that haunted those in my family line, let me go. Powers that said nobody can rise in my hometown, let me go. I believe in back to sender. I believe in pulling down altars. I believe there are powers of your father's house that can stop you. Do you know what Jesus said? Let me surprise you. In Revelation 3.8. He says, I know thy works, and I know thy struggle. I, he says, I open the door for you that no man can shut. Meaning there are doors that men shut. There are doors, sir, that men can shut. That's why God, Jesus said, this particular one. There are many doors I've opened for you before that men shut. Say, but this one. I wish I was talking to somebody here. But this one, open your two hands. I make a decree from my mouth to God's ears. Every door open for you. 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 I decree no man can shut it. Who are thou? Oh, great mountain. 
A mountain is an inanimate object. The Bible, would, the Bible should not address a mountain with a personification. In the figure of speech, the word who is called pers is classified as personification. Am I speaking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? It is, it is irony or what you call a metaphoric simile for you to use the word mountain an inanimate object and you say who it's not right he said who are thou O great mountain uh, to me that means that behind every mountain there is a human hand who are thou O great mountain of marriage behind every delay in marriage there is a human hand who are thou O mountain of poverty behind every poverty there is a human hand who are thou O mountain of limitation behind every limitation there is a human hand who are thou O mountain of rejection reduction scarcity and deprivation behind all of these there is a human hand and i say this in the name of jesus as you hear the sound of my voice i make a decree that that human hand shall be cut off it shall be cut off it shall be cut off. Amen. Take your seat. Moses was having an encounter with God. After the people he had led, follow me, the people he had led had spoken against him and they had criticized his style of leadership. Yet he had a body. You see, the Lord told me something in Luke chapter 6, verse 26. He said, Luke 6 26 woe unto you when all men speak well of you you never did that before so if there's nothing bad said about you you are in trouble woe unto you somebody say God forbid When all men speak well of you. For so! They did. To their fathers. To the first prophets. Can I get the TPT or the message? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why are you? <laughs> Can we get the message? Message will hit it more. What sorrow are what those? Okay. There is trouble ahead when you live only for the approval of others. Saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them, popularity contests are not truth contest. Look how many scrounged, scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestor. Your task is to be true, not popular. be true not popular and it takes <laughs> oh god okay let me not say this now let me not say this mm. please don't miss the minister's conference Moses began to engage a conversation with God and they were talking. And he said, the Lord said to him, you know, when they were having a conversation, Moses said, if your presence, this is how he started, he said, if your presence doesn't go with us, we will not go. 15, 16, 14, 15, 16. And he said, if your presence go not with us, don't carry us along. He gets down and he said, because if you know we are out of Egypt now, we are on our way to the promised land. If you know your presence does not go with us to Egypt. Please, it's better we end it here. Why? He said, what will separate us from other nations? 
So it takes the presence to be distinguished. Am I talking to somebody here? It takes divine presence to stand out. Now, if you don't go with us, your presence doesn't go with us, we become like mere mortals, like other people. It takes the presence of God. In Psalm 16, 11, he said, he said, that will show me the path of life, for in thy presence there is fullness of joy. Go back to verse 16 of Exodus 33. You brought it up just now. Go back to verse 16, Exodus 33. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated. I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face. So if you're in business, for your business to stand out, you need divine presence. If you are a singer, for your music to stand out, you need divine presence. If you are a preacher, for your ministry to stand out, you need divine presence. If you're an academician, for your academics to stand out, you need divine presence. You are married, for your marriage to stand out, you need divine presence. And Moses said, unless that presence go with us, and the Lord said, no problem. My presence will go with you. Moses continues. See, there's still something about you. You have gotten deliverance. You have gotten your presence. But there's something. Aha! Please, show me your glory. God say, ah! Telling me to show you my glory is saying I should show you my full form. Glory is the full embodiment of divinity. That empowers humanity to live in tranquility. Is the full condiment. You know what condiments are? When you want to cook or prepare a meal. Eh, condiment. All of the, the ajinomoto, the thyme and curry and all the spices. Is the full condiment uh, uh, of the Godhead bodily that gives the terrestrial capacity to live in equanimity it gives the terrestrial capacity capacity to live in serenity to live in celestiality and to live in equanimity to live in tranquility am i communicating right now so it is the fullness the fullness the fullness the fullness that helps the terrestrial to circumvent process that helps you to break protocol am i communicating right now that helps you to shorten your journey that helps you to get visa without interview job without question arrival without journey marriage without dating am i talking to somebody right now i come and i make a decree as you hear the sound of my voice wherever you are wherever you come from god will show you his glory i said god will show you his glory power will show you his glory the holy ghost will show you his glory the spirit of god will show you his glory god will show you his glory God will show you his glory. Amen. Power will show you his glory. Amen. Somebody shout, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Take your seat. Wow. So. So. So, God said, you want to see my glory? Say yes. Say now, let's have a conversation. He said, I've seen my mercy, my goodness, and my mercy so if you must see my glory number one you must see my mercy mercy gives birth to glory you cannot enjoy glory without mercy 
Mm. Mm. God was speaking, speaking clearly to David in Second Samuel seven fifteen. I will not take my mercy from him as I took him from his dad, he that was before you. In other words, what God took away from King Saul was mercy. God took mercy from Saul. And that was why Saul was moving from pillar to post. The same thing the Lord said to him in 1 Chronicles 17, 13. When Solomon was speaking in 1 Kings 3, 6, Solomon said that God showed his father mercy. And in 1 Chronicles, I believe, or 2 Chronicles 1 verse 8, I think, he said that by mercy he is reigning. So Solomon was saying, I am reigning in the place of my father because God showed me mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is not forgiveness. When you say, Lord, forgive me. God sees the blood of Jesus. When you say, Lord, show me mercy. God sees the person of Jesus. The blood was shed, but the person is interceding. How do I explain this for you to understand? Forgiveness attracts the benefit of the finished work. Mercy attracts the pleasure of the present work. What is he doing at the right hand of, father, of the father now? He's making intercession. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. I can't hear you say, Lord, have mercy. When you say, Lord, have mercy, what echoes in the ears of God is the intercession that Jesus is doing. What echoes in the ears of the, of the Father is the current intercession that Jesus is making. Say, Lord, have mercy. You are not talking like you came to church well. Say, Lord, have mercy. One more time. Say, Lord, have mercy. Say it again. Say, Lord, have mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy. Mercy is God's medicine. Mercy is God's medicine. That is why he says in Abacock chapter 3 and verse 2, in rot, remember mercy. He says in Psalm 102 and verse 13, he says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. But Timaeus cried out in Mark 10:47. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. In here, the mercy is God's medicine. When mercy shows up, God's prescription is downloaded upon the, upon the terrestrial of humanity. God's prescription is embedded in the mercy of God. It takes mercy to come out of a messed life. It takes mercy to come out of a reproached life. It takes mercy. Sir, when you got born again, you were still stranded. You were born again, you were broke. You were born again, you were suffering. Until mercy came. That's what we call an encounter. You now had an encounter either with an unction or with a grace. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. I can't hear you say, Lord, have mercy. One more time, say, Lord, have mercy. Say it again, Lord, have mercy. God said, I'll show you mercy. And, and God said to Abraham, said to Moses, said, you want to see my glory? Okay, first of all, let my mercy. It's okay. What is the next thing? He said, um, number two, to see my glory. Uh, Moses, there is a problem. The second thing you must expose, you can see that the glory of God is hidden in revelations. Anytime glory shows up, it means secrets are unveiled. There is something, Moses, I need to tell you. And Moses, what is that? He said, number two prescription, which is important. Um, no man sees my face and lives. 
That's the second prerequisite. No man sees my face and live. That's the second entrance into my glory. How does Moses need that? God said, don't, don't ever try. Know that no man sees my face and live. Yet in 1 Chronicles 16, 11, the Bible says, seek his face. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, popular verse of scripture of my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Psalm 105 and verse 4, seek his face. Is it Psalm 26, 4 now? He said, this is the generation of them that seek thy face. Huh? God just said, no man sees his face and live. And the same God told us to seek. In other words, God is saying, come and die. How can you say no man sees your face and live? And now you are saying, seek my face. What God was trying to say is that the day my face is revealed to you, the man in you dies. No man. Moses, you want to see my face? Let the flesh that's the second point. To see his glory, let the flesh. The spirit has to come. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, if any man has not the spirit of God, is none of him. <laughs> in Matthew 16, in, in Matthew 16, 17, Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this. Oh, so there are revelations that come by flesh and blood. Peter was not the first man who called Jesus Lord. Nathaniel did. But Nathaniel called Jesus Lord after Jesus called his name. It was the spectacular, the spectacular that made Nathaniel acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. So that revelation was flesh and blood. Because of what you did, now I say you are this. So this revelation is flesh and blood. Because I see something spectacular, that is why I love God. Flesh and blood. Because God has just given me a car, that is why my love for him has increased. Flesh and and blood but Peter in his rejected state in a state of no expectation who do you say I am there's nothing you are looking for for me to do for you there's no demand who do you say I am first of all who do men say because Jesus knew that men will always say okay now who do you say He said, you are Christ. Mm. Now you know I am Christ. Let me tell you who you are. The revelation of your life is in the revelation of who he is. Is predicated on the revelation of who he is. For in thy light shall we see our own light. Psalm 36 and verse 9. In the light shall we see. So God said to him, flesh. John 6, 63, he said, it's the spirit that quickened it. You can never achieve a divine goal using fleshly energy. I told you the story about Zechariah chapter 4. Normally in the temple, is the duty of the priest to pour oil on the lamp so that the fire keeps burning. That's why the, the fire in the temple must never go out. The priest sits down. His duty is to watch the lamp in the temple. To make sure the fire never goes out. So he sits and he's watching the lamp. So when the fire is almost going out, he goes there and he puts oil on the lamp. So the fire never goes out. Everybody leaves the temple except the priest. Every three hours, every six hours, every four hours, he pours the oil. So one time God shows Zechariah a revelation. And Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 4, Zechariah sees a revelation and the lamp was burning and there was no priest in the temple. That sounded very strange from what he grew up to know. 
having been a young man who grew up around the motions of worship in the temple he said what are these God said I'm showing you an end time temple that will not be a location it will be a people and they will be burning but this time the oil being poured shall not be by power shall not be by might Many of you quote that scripture, but you don't understand what is the genesis of it. He said, this fire that shall burn shall not be by power. It shall not be mechanical or technical. It shall not be the physical human priest. It shall be the spirit continually pouring the oil so the people continually burn. It will be the spirit continually pouring the oil. As he pours the oil, the people burn. As he pours the oil, the people burn. As he pours the oil. Show me your glory. Number three. Number three. Are you ready for number three? Because Moses, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you my back part. I will cause you to stand on the side. And I will show you. My what? My back part. So people say, Moses never saw God's face but he saw God's back ladies and gentlemen if I see your back I've seen a part of you huh? if I see your back bring God that, that is it verse 20 or verse 21 Exodus 33 let me show you something 22 it shall come to pass while my glory passes by I will put thee in the cleft of a, of a rock will cover thee with my hand while I pass by 23 I will take my hand away thou shalt see my back part but my face shall not be seen give me message translation verse 23 I will take my hand away you will see my back but you will see my face Bring the TP to you, any good news, any other translation. Then I would take my hand away, but you will see my back, not my face. I will take my hand away, you, sh you shall see my back, and my but my face shall not be seen. So, if God showed Moses his back, and people say no man has seen God, it means we can invariably say that Moses saw the back of God seen the back of God he has seen a part of God no the back of God God was telling Moses I will show you where I am coming from what I did in the past where you were not there who wrote Genesis was it there and God said let there be light was it there that was the back And God separated the land from the firmament. Was it there? That was the back. When you see God's back, you see your own future. Can I surprise you? In Deuteronomy, Moses wrote and Moses died. He was still alive when he wrote it. Who wrote Deuteronomy? And he wrote and Moses died. Sent to Moses, Moses, I will show you what I did when nobody was there. Sir, if you want to see the glory of God, you go to your Bible and begin to study what God has done in the past. Study how God blessed the man in the past. That was what David did when Goliath came to him. He looked at Goliath and Saul said, This Philistine had been a warrior from his youth. Number two, this Philistine has a spear that's bigger than you two times. Number three, this Philistine, he does not miss a target. And David said, let me show you the back of God. There was a time I kept my father's flocks. The lion came. I tore the lion with my bare hand. There was a time I kept my father's flocks. The bear came. I tore the bear. The God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will deliver me from this uncertain. 
I want to ask you a question. You need a miracle. Talk to me. You need a miracle. Has God done it before? You want a glorious future? Has he done it before? You need a baby. Look for a scripture that locates the back of God. Hannah got a baby. Rebecca got a baby. It's time to see where God is coming from. He made Abraham rich in cattle. He can make you rich. Am I speaking to somebody? He said, children shall surround your table. He can do that for you. He was saying, Moses, if you want to see my glory, begin to uncover what I have done in the past. Begin to discover where I am coming from. Begin to uncover what I did in the days of old. In the days of old, he turned water to wine. In the days of old, he healed the leprous men. In the days of old, he opened the eyes of the blind. In the days of old, he stopped deaf ears. In the days of old, One day, Mama came to where I kept some clothes. Very, very organized. Very organized. I organized them in an, an unorganized manner. So I just dropped them. And she said, you don't use these clothes anymore. I said, well, some. She bundled them. She kept them. Bundled, kept them. Bundled, kept them. And she said, you can't wear this anymore. You've worn them over and over. Give them out. It's okay. And they gave it out. They gave it and one of the people they gave it to took it and hung it outside. A madman was passing. A madman was passing. Passing by the line where the clothes were. Mama shared this with me herself. He came from the girl they gave the clothes. The madman grabbed that t-shirt and ran. In his mind, he stole. He wore it. Senses restored. Senses restored. 2004. A woman was in labor, had a set of twins in Irwa. And the doctor said the two babies were dead. Not that they just died, they were smelling. There's an option. They're going to operate her and they will have to remove the womb along with the dead babies. The husband said, God forbid. Drove down to Auchi. It was the generation of giving number for counseling. <laughs> oh Lord. I will sit down 5 a.m. Oops. The counseling was, did I counsel you? Were you in that, in that you, because the way you are shaking your head, Tenebe. <laughs> God. A long queue, I will counsel tonight. And the guy came. I had just finished a session. I said I was tired. I was resting. He looked around and saw my clothes. He stole it. Why the boys, some boys were trying to catch him, the guy took off. Entered his car, went back, placed the cloth on the woman, and began to cry. I know me, Pastor. I know me, Pastor. But I carry cloth. Come, put them. The woman held it and they were crying. The doctor said it's time to go to the theater. The woman noticed something moved in her womb. Something moved in her womb. And the doctor said, Why are you doing your stomach? He said, The thing they told me, they told me, he said, Okay, okay. Because normally, for you to do an operation, they have to flush your system. One day or two, you stay without meal. So the doctor said, Now nah, the reaction, you never eat. Let's do it quick. He said, No, something they kick. They kick. The doctor said, what kind, of, what kind of nonsense talk is that? Your babies are dead. Please take her. He was kicking. The nurse put the hand. He said, doctor, there's a kick. The doctor put it. He said, wait. He put it. He said, wait. He put it. He said, wait. Now, the next thing they opened the leg, head was coming out. Now, they rushed her in. 
the first one came out the second one came out the doctor stood looked at the nurse looked what happened get the notice she was holding something they tried to take it from her hand she wouldn't let it go it was the cloth she was holding and the doctor said what is that the husband said that's what i gave my wife she put it something happened the doctor said we have a case we've been on that case for about a week give me the cloth the doctor left left where the woman delivered the baby am i speaking to somebody here took it to that the whole place went wild sir i was resting in the house it wasn't me it was the glory somebody says show me your glory show me your glory a lady from baptist church in lagos surulere her husband was chained he had been mad for nine years and somebody told her about her ministry and this woman came and they said she cannot see me i don't know why and she couldn't see me she was going back discouraged and she was unhappy she got to the park over there when she got to the park about to enter the car she saw a poster she looked she asked somebody is that the apostle suleiman they said yes and she walked to the picture is your apostle i came from lagos to see you she was talking to poster he said they say i can't see you but i'm telling you now before i go back my husband for nine years he has been mad pray for him i'm going back to lagos pray for him while she was talking the car was getting filled gradually he said i know that your god can do it they say i can't see you but i came to see your god she was talking to poster while she was still doing that her phone began to shake her phone was vibrating still while she was doing that her phone was vibrating she picked up the call and told the young boy that was thinking of the husband he said kenya they come and they come he said wait or god won't talk to you the man began to scream when did this happen they said about five minutes ago he just turned here is my wife somebody says show me your glory show me your glory and you say show me your glory show me your glory i was preaching in benin city western boys high school that is where dr adebayo saw me the first time take care of those people you were there west how many of you are in western boys high school years ago okay many were there a woman brought her son on a wheelbarrow born crippled they came to beg for money they could not afford a wheelchair so they came to beg for money. It was about 10 years old. The legs were so tiny and fragile. They came to beg for money. So they kicked position at the gate. People passing by were dropping money. And as I began to pray, miracles were happening. So the woman, obviously interested, began to wheel her child to see what was going on. She so see that one. I can see. I can walk. I can do. She said, eh? hey. Why she was so interested, she forgot she brought her child. Abandoned the child. I went forward i was looking eh? wow ah, ah. Eh? Hey, these people they are pure they will give us money today they will give us money she went back the wheelbarrow was empty what do you call wheelbarrow for our international delegate it's wheelbarrow that's what they call it here okay wheelbarrow actually is the barrel with the wheel <laughs> and the wheelbarrow was empty she was shouting where am i picking where am i picking the next thing she turned the child was walking on the altar the child had jumped up and was walking and they abandoned the child. There is a miracle. There is a miracle. She shot the child. She was screaming. She was screaming. Somebody said, show me your glory. <laughs> Preaching in the church in Benin. There was a boy who was born with O legs. Not bow. O. 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 Round. That's how he was born. And the power of God hit the place. The legs became straight, the trousers became short. And I remember that testimony. I turned to the sister. I said, is this your brother? He said, from the waist up is my brother. From the, <laughs> from the waist down is not my brother. Somebody said, show me your glory. But we are in this church. 
and there were two little babies that were brought here without eyeballs from Portacot. No eyeballs. It's on video, it's online. You can check it. No eyeballs. And the Lord said to me, Place your hands. Their face was sealed. The power of God hit the first child. God gave two new eyeballs. The power of God hit the second one. God gave two new eyeballs. How many of you in service that day? Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. It's about to be a Yamahata, a release of the fullness of celestiality terrestrially. The embodiment of divinity is about to be unleashed on your humanity. That by reason of this deposit and element coming, you begin to walk in the supernatural naturally. I say walk in the supernatural naturally. Walk in the supernatural naturally. Show me. Show me. Show me. Assemblies of God, Benin. A lady had cancer and her two breasts were cut off. And I was ministering and I said, there's somebody the Lord said you had a cancer operation and they cut off your breast. The Lord said, check it, it had just grown. Now, when I said it, I kept quiet because I was scared. See, this is when I talk, so what did happen? 